guys welcome back um this is part one of what i'm gonna call the journey um this is where i'm kind of reflecting on what's been happening with my life and this is my most recent um art piece that i tried to do with charcoal i want to do a better one uh and i'm gonna actually incorporate some still life i sort of just did it just freehand like random i don't particularly like it i don't like how it turned out I think it's like kind of crappy um and there wasn't a lot of passion that went into it so to hell with this piece um so I guess or I can start with what's been going on lately I've been going to counseling because I've been feeling kind of troubled I'm trying to work on a number of things I'm trying to work on ah being assertive more, being less of a people pleaser, which has been an extremely difficult journey. And I'm also working on my sexuality. And it's been such an intense journey. And the sessions of that are discussing this topic have only recently started. So first we covered assertiveness, which I've gotten better at. Um, and the reason why I struggle so much with being assertive is because I don't like to hurt people's feelings, but I know that being assertive doesn't mean hurting people's feelings. You just speak up. That's it. And I get the concept, and I understand how it, like, works, the general idea. It's just kind of hard to implement, but I'm getting a bit better, so I feel pretty proud of that. Um, now, in regards to my sexuality, I'm not sure that I am but I may be a member of the LBTG uh, community because I'm not sure, but I might be bisexual and I'm trying to come to terms with that. And I'm sure a lot of you have struggled with this. Those of us who have had a religious upbringing, it has obviously affected you and the morals that you're expected to hold up to affect you too so what's affected me negatively is the idea that and of course I grew up I'm still growing up uh, Catholic um, so the idea of deviating from the norm of these expectations like for example the typical one don't have sex before marriage you can't masturbate um, you know like somehow supposedly if you have sex before marriage you're gonna go to hell or some shit like that and it's like i'm looking at it now i've looked at the bible and whatnot in a more realistic manner and i've critically seen other people like atheists and such that have sort of broken apart the bible and its texts and the legends and the origins of a lot of these things and a lot of it is just bullshit you know and I'm sorry to say if this is offensive for some people, like, oh, how dare you criticize the book and whatever. But it's just been such a negative thing because I've always had to live up those, like, to those expectations, but it's caused a lot more harm than good. Instead of being a normal adult who's comfortable with being sexually active and who's confident in that and who's just, like, you know, like a normal thing, which it is. It's biologically normal. We all have a libido. We all have a sex drive. Um, at least, not all of us. Although those, those who are asexual don't, but that's totally cool. Um, but, you know, the majority do, whether you fall under the category of a heterosexual or a member of the LBTG uh, community. And so it's like, I know that it's a perfectly natural thing. I've even learned about it in a psychology class that I took called Psychology of Human Sexuality. And so it's like, it delved into, you know, our genitalia, to the hormones that go into the brain during sexual activity, through the senses that are involved, arousal, arousal in men, women, the sexual responses to that, um, the sex cycle when we're intimate, the different theories that delve into that. Like, it's super interesting. Um, uh, things about the LBTG 
community as well, like the different type of sexualities. Like, and it showed me that, in spite of what the Bible says, the world and humanity is so complex. And it shows that it's okay to be different and it's okay to be your version of normal. There is no such thing as normal to me. And that's the cool thing about it. So what I'm trying to do is no longer believe in that concept anymore. I don't want to believe that having sex before marriage is going to send me to hell. I don't want to believe that virginity loss equates to like losing something sacred or special. Like, yes, it is. And that's what it is. What I'm getting at is it's a, it's up to the person themselves, whether it be man, woman, non-binary, whatever. It's up to the person themselves to decide whether or not they want to remain abstinent or not. And ultimately it should be their decision. They shouldn't have to be pressured into, you know, having sex or pressure someone else into having sex. It should be a mutual, respectful, consensual thing that is an expression of love and intimacy between you and your partner. Or if you're, you know, or if you're, you know, you want multiple partners, you can do that too, whatever, whatever floats your boat. Um, so I'm trying to come to terms with that. And it's just, it's just been really difficult because all your life, this is all my life. I was always taught, don't have sex before marriage. Don't have sex before marriage. If you do, you're going to go to hell. Or you can't masturbate because it's wrong. Or or that sex is bad. and Shite like that. Like, even in schools. Like, they don't even talk about... Like, the sex ed classes. Like, the way I grew up. They talked about... A bunch of, like... Like, they never gave you the proper education... For sex or about sex they didn't properly at least for me they didn't properly talk about the genitalia how they function why they function the chemical reactions of the brain um, you know how an orgasm would work they don't talk about like contraception what you can do to pre prevent pregnancy and STIs or STDs the different types of STDs the ones that are viral the ones that are bacterial you know it didn't prepare you for shite. It was always just this like negative thing like, oh no, if you're a woman and you have sex, you're automatically just going to get pregnant, you know? And it's like, no. And what's stupid is that you tell people to be abstinent, but they're not going to be. And it's like, you know, it's like when you tell somebody, it's kind of like that same idea when you tell somebody not to do something, they're going to want to do it. Like, like, um, something as simple as, don't eat the candy that's there on the table. But you want to eat it anyway because you're told not to. So like when people say, or schools say, whatever the frick, religious figures say, don't have sex before marriage, people are going to want to anyway. Because, I mean, we're raging hormones. We have a, we have libidos. We have, you know, it's, it's there. It's natural. It's something people can't really avoid. And that's a part of being human. It's part of being a mammal. It's part of being an animal. Because to me, humans are animals. Because we're mammals. We mate. We reproduce. We nurse our offspring. We, you know, we're territorial. We're a close-knit social network of species. And we're brilliant. Yet, I feel like religion has restricted me. Because I followed all these rules. Because I was expected to. And it's caused such a harmful effect on my libido and in everything else that I I almost want to leave and I'm not sure how to let go because all my life I'm always taught oh god loves you and da 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 right and of course since I'm catholic it's that idea of pray, praying to the virgin mary and what whatever 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 but we've been waiting for 2000 plus years for Jesus to come back then he hasn't come back. What the f are you? You know, it's like, I feel like, and again, this is just me venting, but I feel like I've been lied to. Like all these promises that, oh, this and that, and he cured this and that, you know, 
how do we know that those accounts were even true? I was trying to look back at the history of the Bible and I saw that it's ripped off of other previous gods. If you actually look at the history of the origins of the stories that are in there, not only, I think, are more than 50 scriptures missing from the Bible, it's probably been mistranslated and, you know, poorly, you know, it's probably been, like, mistranslated or poorly translated so many times that you don't even know what the hell the truth is anymore. And that's why I don't hold it to such a religious high degree. Because I look at all the contradictions that it has and how it, how it, it's almost regressive for society. Like, it supports slavery. It supports the idea of um women not being equal to men women being lesser beings like oh look you're just here to have a baby like excuse me <laughs> no we're not yes we're biologically capable of creating offspring and as part of our you know creation we have sex drives and we want to have sex in order to create offspring but people are complicated people have sex for a whole slew of reasons you could have a ren sex, you could have makeup sex, you could have sex because you just want your fix, you could have sex because you want to connect with your partner, you could have sex, you know? It's, it's complicated. It's not just one reason or one thing. So I don't like that it's implied that it's only one reason for intimacy. And I feel like it takes away from the partners themselves. Like, instead of having, seeing sex as like, a means of bonding and connecting with your lover or multiple lovers um it's in, and like a deep respectful bond that you have for each other it's just oh no let's just have a baby that's it the end and great and i'm not judging those who do want to have children good for you but like sex shouldn't be the only reason sex shouldn't have merely one definition because it just doesn't make sense so Anyway, before I wrap this up, I'm going to be continuing the journey of exploring my sexuality, figuring out the harmful, like, I don't know what else to word this, but the harmful triggers that have affected me, like, like, let me give you an example, like, the idea of not having sex before marriage, and I think, okay, I'm going to obey that rule. And I've obeyed it for so long. And I've restricted myself for so long. Suppressed my sex starve, I guess, for so many years that it's like I I avoid sex now. I avoid it altogether. Hell. That's I think that's why I've been single for so long. I I'm honestly kind of happy being single. It's sort of liberating because I'm not tied down to anybody. I can be my own person. I can do my own thing. I don't have to worry about any of that. It's kind of nice. So I'm trying to focus on self-love and being okay with having a sex drive and being what I would consider a sexual human being. Like, it's a part of me, just like it's a part of many others, but... I'm so used to following those rules that have caused restriction that I don't know how to break free. I don't know how to be what would be considered a normal functioning woman, human adult, you know? So, damn it, man. So just thank you for listening. I hope I made some semblance of sense. If this offends anybody, I apologize, but I'm just throwing my thoughts out there. Because I feel like I have an audience, I might as well let you guys know what's going on. And I'm going to continue going to therapy for as long as I need. I don't care how long it takes. I'm going to get better and I'm going to conquer this. Whatever the fuck this is. Excuse my language. I just, I want to be okay. And I would appreciate you guys listening just because it, it helps. It's nice listening to people and even though you might not agree with a lot of stuff that I'm saying or might not be able to empathize you know whatever but I do appreciate you guys listening so thank you to all my subscribers and everybody else um have a great day and oh please post in the comments below what you're gonna dress up as for Halloween if you celebrate it please do Woo! okay um 
they went to at the 15 minute mark and then I'll end the video. <laughs>